Apple's long-rumored return to the camera industry may have finally happened, but not in the way you think. WWDC 24 saw Apple announce Vision OS 2, providing new features for their Vision Pro headset, as well as a wider, more global rollout for the product. More interestingly, however, high-end camera manufacturer Blackmagic Design announced that it would be working alongside Apple to produce the first professional digital film camera designed for immersive stereoscopic video capture. Based on their new Ursa Cineline, the camera will feature a twin sensor design and dual fixed focal length lenses. This announcement is particularly exciting as it gives us potential clues about the future of the Vision Pro, Apple's wider focus on video production and where they see the technology being adopted. However, 3D stereoscopic video and XR headsets have been problematic technologies in recent years, with both struggling to get the wide-scale adoption and acceptance from consumers despite heavy investment. So, why is Apple investing in these technologies? What has changed since the last iterations? And what plan does Apple have to ensure success this time around? 3D or stereoscopic film is normally associated with the blue and red cardboard glasses. However, people have been trying to replicate 3D imagery almost since photography was first invented. The principles of stereoscopic image capture are not that complicated, at least not in theory. The technology just needs to replicate the way human vision works, essentially capturing two images of the same subject at the same time from two slightly different perspectives. In practice, however, there are many other aspects to consider if trying to represent human vision as dynamically and correctly as possible. IPD, or interpupillary distance, essentially the distance between the eyes. This is important to give the correct appearance of scale and depth. If the distance between lenses is too wide, then subjects may appear closer and smaller than in reality. If lenses appear too close, then objects appear to be flatter, larger and further away. Convergence is another aspect of vision which needs replicating. Due to their slightly different positions, the two cameras must pan to keep the main focal point or subject correctly framed and overlapping on the final image. Also, aspects like depth of field and focus point are important to match across both images. Even once the images are captured correctly, there is the problem of projection and display. How do you get a different image into each eye? Stereoscopic imagery is believed to have been popularized as early as 1832 with devices known literally as stereoscopes, originally created by Sir Charles Wheatstone, although the invention of the basic concept can be traced back as far as 1823. These devices basically operate in the same way as VR headsets do today. In essence, a pair of lenses looking into a box which shows a separate image to each eye. The lenses just allow the user to focus at a closer distance, keeping the device more compact. The children's toy, the Viewmaster, is essentially the same basic concept. The stereoscopic concept was first attempted in motion picture film during the late 1890s by British film pioneer William Fries Green, who filed a patent which had two films projected side by side on screen, with the viewer having to look through a stereoscope to converge the two images. The idea was, however, not seen to be particularly practical. Frederick Eugene Ives also patented his stereo camera rig around this time in 1900. Other attempts at 3D motion picture film included a projector system which quickly flickered between right and left eye frames, mechanically synced with a viewing device mounted on the viewer's armrest. The 3D film popularity largely died out, however, by the late 1920s, with occasional stereoscopic movies surfacing over the next couple of decades. Then, in the early 1950s, 3D film got its first resurgence and hit its apparent golden age. This time, the technology was able to be showcased with cheap, simple glasses due to the invention of the Polaroid plastic sheet, first showcased by Edwin Land for 3D movies in 1934. 
Although the technology was known about already, the polarized plastic sheets made manufacture and distribution a lot cheaper and easier than the glass-based processes previously. Polarized 3D systems work by projecting two differently polarized images over the top of one another. Each lens is designed to only let one of these images through while blocking the other, so each eye gets a different image. These basically work in the same way as the blue and red lensed anaglyph glasses, but instead of blocking our colors, they essentially block light directionally, giving them the benefit of being able to see the full color spectrum. Despite the anaglyph glasses' iconic status, they were never really used in cinema that often, and probably got mainly associated with 3D because of being included with comic books and later used with home videos. They were also probably more prevalent in 3D marketing, as polarized glasses just look like shades. Again, by the late 1950s, the interest in 3D movies subsided, only to return again in the 1980s with the growth of IMAX. Polarized lenses were still dominant late in the 1990s when shutter glasses were introduced for the domed screens, which wouldn't work with polarized glasses. Shutter or active 3D glasses worked by syncing the frames on screen with the lenses, which alternately block out light to one eye at a time. This was normally done through liquid crystal tech that could make the lenses opaque when voltage is applied. The glasses would receive the signal through infrared radio frequency or wire. Proper mainstream resurgence came around 2003 with a host of 3D movies released and the developing TV technology, allowing for better viewing experiences at home. Auto stereoscopic screen technology was developed to emit directional imagery which could show a different image to each eye without glasses, although it had drawbacks like reduced viewing angles. Around this time, digital motion picture cameras were just beginning to be used. Camera company RED saw their new epic prototype camera being specifically chosen by Peter Jackson on the Hobbit production. This was mainly due to its small size when compared to traditional cameras and allowed them to build a manageable two-camera rig setup. That being said, these rigs were still extremely complicated, mainly due to having to replicate human vision characteristics. The cameras were mounted on a right angle to one another and had to film through a two-way mirror in order to get the distance between the lenses close enough to accurately represent human vision. The focus of the two lenses also had to be perfectly matched and the camera slightly tilted relative to the focal point. Once again, by 2011, 3D movies were largely on the decline, which brings us to the present day. Notably, these resurgences in 3D have appeared in combination with new developments in technology and a new generation who is ready to experience it for the first time. The key technologies this time are not just the rise in VR headsets and miniaturization of cameras, but the resolution being able to be captured and displayed by these technologies. The newly announced Ursa Cine, on which the Apple camera is based, features a 12K full-frame proprietary sensor housed in a body designed for multiple operators and larger productions, as well as having a cost of $15,000. With its twin 8,160 by 7,200 pixel sensors and integrated lenses, you can expect the stereoscopic vision to cost quite a bit more. The camera also has some innovations, like a proprietary drive to record the vast amounts of data needed to capture the level of fidelity required for face-mounted displays. In the case of the Vision Pro, this is estimated at around 3,660 by 3,142 pixels per eye, a high resolution compared to most other VR and AR headsets. However, as these pixels need to cover the whole of your vision, including allowing for eye movement, a user can only really focus on a portion of the screen at a time, meaning that the actual screen pixel density is a lot lower. While the viewing experience of the Vision Pro has been praised, Palmer Lucky, founder of Oculus, now Meta, has been quoted saying that resolutions of around 8K or 8000 by 8000 pixels per eye is needed for all screen door and pixelation effects to truly disappear. 
Either way, the twin 8K sensors of the new Blackmagic camera should provide a decent amount of future-proofing for Apple. Recent years have seen underwhelming sales and slowing advancements from the likes of Meta, with Apple Vision Pro also rumored to be underperforming in its first year. This is most likely largely due to the eye-watering price tag of $3,500 versus the benefits and use cases of the device. The headset, however, represents a significant investment for the company, and one area that has been praised is media consumption, allowing users to watch movies or play games, for example, in their own virtual cinema. It just so happens that Apple also owns a production company and is renowned for setting up ecosystems, a term used in the tech world to describe the offering of exclusive connectivity between their devices, coercing users into only buying only other Apple-branded products. This is often criticized as it tends to promote monopolistic behavior. However, Apple are not the only brand currently doing this. The iPhone 15 Pro launch also saw the ability to capture stereoscopic video added to the device, with rumors of the upcoming iPhone 16 having its cameras reoriented to be able to offer the same feature, providing a lower-end entrance into 3D video capture. We can surmise from past behavior that the Blackmagic camera is likely intended for Apple TV use, and we can expect to see a whole host of content that can only truly be experienced as intended through Vision Pro. The main issue is what type of content we will see and how it will affect Vision Pro sales. 3D content that has been popular in the past has been experientially targeted, placing the viewer in spaces they would be reluctant to visit in real life. Getting close to wild animals, climbing up mountains, as well as doing well in the horror genre of films and games. We are now seeing an increasing number of movies filmed as if they were done in a single take, designed to make the viewer feel engaged and connected to the action. Films like Birdman and 1917 are key examples of this technique, both of which were highly acclaimed. Most of these films have come out since the decline in 3D movies, so we are yet to see the filming techniques combined on a high level. These types of films often use handheld or steadicam footage to follow the protagonist closely. This would have been very difficult on the older twin camera rigs, but the development of the Blackmagic camera, as well as recent gimbal technology, may make this process a lot easier. There are issues, however. The fixed 180-degree field of view on the camera, while giving a decent replication of human vision, creates some creative problems. Traditional productions are filmed on a wide variety of lenses and focal lengths, especially for nature documentaries, where a camera operator may not want or be able to get up close and personal with a wild animal, for example, and in general terms, it basically limits storytelling to one style. Court or pitch-side filming of sports events have also done well for headsets in the past, and Blackmagic have a history with broadcast technology, so this may also be a consideration for Apple. Either way, one thing we know for certain is that Apple's future will be in 3D. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.